We have concrete showing up here in less than 48 hours and it is time to get these two 1,000 foot rolls of PEX installed on our rebar. We're going to be zip tying it to the rebar except where the control cuts in the concrete are then we're going to staple it down to the slab there. But we got to get rolling so it's ready for the concrete guys. This is my DIY PEX uncoiler. I conglomerated this from a mixture of YouTube ideas and just me coming up with stuff that I had. But basically it's on some wheels there and hopefully this allows us to uncoil our PEX with ease. This is PEX A tubing with oxygen barrier. It's much more flexible than PEX B. I think it's the best for this application. First step is to support our manifold here. The first order of business is to get these fixed in place. These basically just protect the pipes and make them turn 90 degrees as they're coming up through the concrete. Make sure that no finishing tools ends up hurting a pipe. And eventually this piece of metal strut I have here clamping all the tubes will get mounted to the wall and our manifold will be mounted somewhere right around here. But for now we just need to secure this to the wall. I laid the tubing runs out in a program called LoopCAD. There are going to be six circuits here and it's important to try to keep the circuit length about the same. Using the LoopCAD program turned out to be a total game changer. I tried doing this manually in CAD at first and it was very tedious. LoopCAD automatically balanced all of my circuit lengths and laid them out in a logical, easy to follow grid. Note that the software also optimized the direction of the current flow to provide the best heat. Luckily LoopCAD does a 30 day free trial. That's all I use to do this design. We don't have PEX that has foot markers printed on it, unfortunately, but we're gonna do the best we can following the LoopCAD layout and hopefully we get a good result. My first idea was to snake all the tubing underneath the rebar just in the areas where we needed the control cuts, but that soon proved very cumbersome. The right way to do this is to start by feeding your free end up through your conduit sweep, then pull tubing as you need it, zip tying to the top of the rebar. As I went, I put a zip tie on every other intersection. We'll handle the control cut accommodations later. I'll show you how we did that. I originally had a rebar grid at 16 inches on center, but right as I was ordering it, I thought it would be a good idea to order some extra in case I wanted to do 12 inches on center, which is what we ended up doing. That was a very good decision because it made laying out this radiant tubing so much easier. Once I had the 12 inch on center grid, I could lay out the entire radiant tubing system without using my measuring tape once. All I had to do was follow the squares. One of the biggest lessons that I've learned so far in constructing this project is that there's a lot of repetitive, seemingly mindless tasks, but the problem is if you do them mindlessly, you end up having to backtrack because you've screwed something up because you weren't thinking ahead. Right here I did a whole row mindlessly zip tying away before I realized that I needed a turn about 11 squares earlier and I had to rip the whole thing off and take it all back and do the turn. Elena helped me out by coming behind with the scissors and snipping off the excess tail on every single one of these 800 plus zip ties. After all the tubing was finally laid out, it was time to start teeing all of the lines together so it could be pressurized with air for the slab. I just used basic PEX crimp tees and short sections of pipe between all of the ends. Then I pressurized to 60 PSI. This is plenty to keep the tubing from caving in during the pour and enough air to know if we have a problem. LoopCAD told me that I need about 1600 feet of tubing for this project, so I bought two 1000 foot rolls. This turned out to be a good decision because you can only really get three 250 plus foot runs out of each roll. If you were going to try to get four, you would definitely fall short on that last one and you wouldn't be able to make it back home. As a rule of thumb, if you're using half inch PEX, 300 foot is the maximum circuit length you can do. I just used some duct tape to label my runs. So they are circuits one through six, and we have supplies and returns with each circuit, hence the R's and the S's. My circuits one through three have the supply kind of as the, the right run that comes out, the run closer to the edge, while four, five, and six 
it's actually the left. The hotter supply is closer to the edge. This is because the slab is losing most of its heat at the perimeter, so you want your hotter supply to be around the edges. The same principle follows really for traditional ducted HVAC. You want all your supplies to be around your windows and the perimeter of your house where the heat is getting lost. Now because we have the tubing on top of the rebar and we are still putting control cuts in, we very carefully marked out where our cuts are going to be. And in those areas, we are making dang sure that that tubing is low. And here's one of the tactics we're using. I cut some scrap tubing basically and shoved it up underneath the rebar but over top the tube and effectively that presses the tube down a little bit. That just keeps it a little bit lower in the slab and we've run string lines across in all the areas where our control cuts are and basically measured down worst case scenario how far that tube is from the string line which is the top of the slab and made sure that we had plenty of clearance there for the saw to come through. Here's another control cut example that we located mostly free of tubing. It's right up the middle of this rebar. We've used a scrap piece to bend those down. And then here at the end, where I could, I grabbed some of these foam board staples for PEX tubing. Some people put whole systems down with these and they really do hold strong. Um, but I'm basically just stapling that small section there to the end. You might be wondering why I chose to zip tie the tubing to the rebar rather than staple it all down to the foam board, and this is why. When I was putting the layout for this together, I came across a few articles written by this guy, John Siegenthaler. He is a mechanical engineering professor who actually did quite a bit of research and simulation on where the best place the tubing should be placed in the slab. And it turns out that if you actually do the math on this, the heat transfer is a lot better with the tubing closer to the surface of the slab. What it boils down to, pun intended, is that you can run the water temperature in the system much lower and achieve the same amount of heat transfer when the tubing is in the middle of the slab or near the top rather than having it all stapled to the bottom. So being that you only get one shot at putting this tubing in, I decided it would be best to leave it in the middle or near the top. That is a wrap on the radiant tubing. Today we are pouring our slab. We're going to do that in next week's video, but I think overall it turned out really well. I'm excited to use it. Hopefully we don't put gashes in the tubing when we're cutting our control joints in the slab, but I think we've taken enough precautions to make sure that doesn't happen. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment below and we'll get back to you. See ya.